Hello, here we are in Bohemia. Now, just a quick reminder, Bohemia is our house. It's in West Cornwall, somewhere in the middle of the countryside between Penzance and St Ives. We bought this house about a year and a half ago and we've been slowly working through a number of projects um, to uh, bring the house into an environmentally friendly and uh, lovely home. Now, this video is, uh, is important because this is a milestone. This is our solar and our battery installation. So just this week we had the final commissioning of the uh, battery system. So um, I'm going to talk it through. I'm going to go right back to where we left off the last video where we had just had the uh, consumer unit changed and um, a smart meter fitted. So you might remember that we got rid of all that old, um, old fuse boxes and meters and we had a smart meter fitted in the house. And um, this was the first stage in getting onto Octopus and uh, getting onto a good tariff. Now, the tariff that we're on now is Octopus Intelligent Go because we've got the EV. And um, it sort of made sense more than anything else to get some batteries. And the reason for that is that our daytime tariff, something in the order of 28, 30p a kilowatt hour, whereas nighttime it was 7.5p. And, and actually now it's even dropped down to 7p. So, just offsetting from off-peak to daytime, we are going to save a lot of money and that's what this is all about. So we looked into lots of different systems, we spoke to different electricians and eventually um, we came up with the, the, the thought of going with Give Energy. Now we looked at My Energy Libby because we've already got the Zappi and the Eddy and we thought keep it within the ecosystem, so that was an option. We thought about Tesla a power wall for about two seconds before we completely rejected that idea and also we looked at other companies like solar x and um, various others now we eventually decided to go with give energy and you'll see here we've got the um, various give energy batteries and inverters and all kinds of stuff here the main reason for that was the cost very cost effective the fact that it's a british company and their customer support is very highly rated and uh, also that we managed to get the configuration that suited us. So let's just go right back to, it was last year, it was before Christmas in 2023 that we first um, spoke about uh, doing this installation and we were asked to consider a couple of things. Firstly, what is your daytime peak time usage on an average day? And we reckon that was about 20 kilowatt hours on an average day and secondly what is your peak load so i measured it on basically i measured it when i was cooking i had the induction hobs going i had the microwave on the kettle the oven everything going and it was around about six kilowatts but actually between you and me it did peak at about eight kilowatts but i didn't want to push my luck so i told the um, electricians that we decided to use that we were um, hoping to get like a maximum of six kilowatts to cover that peak usage um, before I go any further, let's just give a shout out to NSN. We found this amazing local electrician company in uh, Penzance, really like to support local businesses. We would had one dealing with them before when they came to uh, put in a cable for our water treatment plant. And, you know, we thought, let's uh, let's pursue this and um, see how they uh, see how they react to our suggestions. And honestly, they were brilliant. Um, Alex and Matt looked at what we wanted, they worked it all out, took their time because we were in no hurry. We didn't want to start the work last year. We wanted to do it this year. So they took their time and um, we sort of thought about, we'd like the, we liked the all-in-one, but there were some downsides to it. Um, we liked the um, hybrid inverter, um, and which we've got now, and um, but that required a few solar panels to get that to, to get that going, and we weren't sure about whether we were ready for solar. Um, however, um, Alex and Matt came up with a plan that just just about ticked all the boxes. They gave us a few choices, of course, with a few different quotes, which you'd expect. But the one that we really liked was the combination of the Give Energy All-in-One and Gateway, but almost as a totally separate system, we've got a separate hybrid inverter, and down there we have got another Give Energy battery. So, why did we do this? Because it's a bit of an unusual situation. We've got sort of two systems which aren't necessarily yet gonna talk to each other, but we'll come to that later. 
So, this battery is nine and a half kilowatts. Okay, that covers nearly half of our 20 that we wanted, but the all in one is another 13 and a half kilowatts. So, we've got a total of 23 kilowatts. Okay, so if we fill all that up during the night, we should have on most days enough power to get us all the way through the day uh, without having to draw any peak time electricity at all from the grid. Um, and that's great. Now, let's just come on to the installation. And um, this is where things start to get a little bit complicated because as you saw earlier, we got the meter, electricity meter in the house and the supply comes into the house and then it goes under the ground through a trench which we had dug last year into the garage. However, the gateway needs to go in between the grid and the supply to everything else. And the reason is, if you're wanting to go completely um, self-sufficient with energy in the event of a power cut, you need to be able to isolate yourself from the grid for safety reasons. Yeah, If there's someone working on a wire down the road thinking that the electricity is off and we've got batteries pumping 230 volts into the into the grid that's going to be dangerous so you have to isolate it that's what the gateway does but think about you know the electricity supply goes into the house we've got the batteries in the garage we didn't really want to put all this in the house we need to change something so what we decided to do big decision but we decided to have the incoming mains electricity rerouted from the pole into the garage first and then underground into the house along the existing cable. So we had National Grid come in, that took a while to organize. They had to put a connection up at the top of the pole, run a cable down, a trench under the ground to the garage. They're quite expensive, I have to say, they are quite expensive and they quoted for the whole job. And uh, it was a bit more than we could afford. So we went back and chatted to uh, Alex at NSN and um, he gave us a really competitive quote for putting in the trench and the conduit under the ground from the pole right up to the garage, which saved us a good deal of money. And I have to say, they did a good job, brilliant job. The, the grounds team came in, um, they've got experts, they dug the trench, they managed to get it right under a Cornish hedge, which was quite high and quite difficult because there were different levels on both sides. And um, then National Grid came in and put the cable through the conduit. So let's have a look at this first. We'll go through the whole system, but first of all, this is our new cable coming in from the mains. Yeah, so this is our incoming. They put in a new 80 amp fuse there, and um, we'd wanted 100, but you know they're saying that 80 amp is, is, is okay, so we'll trust them on that. And they moved the meter from the house down to the garage. They did all this in, in about half a day. It didn't take very long at all. And NSN came in, connected up the main breaker. They had to put an extra um, circuit breaker thing in. Not sure what that is, but that's something to do with the earthing. And they had to put a couple of earth rods in outside, make it all safe. Of course, it needs to be safe. Okay, so that's really good. That starts us off. And now, um, of course, they rerouted the power then back out of the gateway. This is this massive back thing, and that goes all the way to the house um, to uh, to supply everything we need in the house. Just a couple of uh, side notes. They did have to put in an extra junction box, which is over there to split off the supply to the house and to the garage, because obviously the zappy comes from the garage, all that kind of stuff. They took care of all that. Okay, so we don't need to worry about that. It's all perfect and um, didn't take them very long at all. So let's see what we've got. We've got the Give Energy Gateway, and this is what I was talking about earlier. This is uh, the main sort of switching center, which uh, all the electricity goes into there from the all-in-one incoming supply, um, this is incoming supply, outgoing supply to the house, and so on. And then also power comes in from the other battery. So gateway is really important. What this does is, as I said earlier, it cuts the power to the grid in the event of a power cut, but it does it really quickly. In fact, the system is uh, set up such that if you're in the house, you don't even notice that it's gone. I think it switches the whole current from for the house, which could be up to 80 amps in about 20 milliseconds, which is quite incredible in the event of a power cut. Yeah, isolates you from the grid and uh, you don't even notice. And then you can power the whole house from your batteries. So that's the plan. Yeah. So that's the gateway. 
we've got the um, Give Energy All in One. This is quite a new product. 13 and a half kilowatts of storage, kilowatt hours, I should say. And this also includes an inverter. So you can run this in isolation on its own. Good piece of kit. And it supplies lots of uh, lots of power, yeah. I think the peak output on this is about seven kilowatts. If you remember earlier, I said we needed to uh, we needed to run those uh, induction hobs, oven, microwave, kettle, whatever, and we could potentially be using eight kilowatts at a time. Well, the combination of this and the other battery, that's easily going to do it. And in fact, we tested it out. I put a couple of hob rings on and I ran the microwave and put the oven on and uh, and the uh, and the Ninja air fryer. And uh, it was drawing about eight kilowatts and all of it came from batteries. Nothing came from the grid, which is exactly what we want. So really happy about that. Um, so that's the um, all-in-one. There are lots of videos on YouTube about these. I'm not going to go into it. I just want to talk through our installation and how it's going to work. Yeah, so... That's the all-in-one. And then just coming over to the other side, we've got the hybrid inverter. And this is where the solar panels come in. Now, we decided that uh, if we were going to do this, it wouldn't do any harm just to have a couple of solar panels to start us off. And that means the uh, um, th we can get the uh, inverter going. We can have a little bit of DC coming in off the panels and make sure it's all working properly. So we thought about maybe two panels to start with and um, NSN talked us into getting four panels. Actually, no, they didn't. We've decided to get four panels. It's not on them. That's on us. And, um, and uh, we got four panels. Now, outside on the grass, as you can see here, we've got, um, we've got our solar panels and we decided to have them ground mounted to save money and because we've got restoration work to do on the house at a later date. So we thought, let's just put them on the ground for now. And um, we were a bit worried about how unsightly they might be and how much of the garden they might use up. So, uh, so the guys came along, they used these, um, these sort of plastic bin things, which are sort of angled at 30 degrees, which means that you can sort of move them around, which is brilliant. I had no idea that existed. I thought they were going to put it, be putting stakes and posts into the ground and stuff. But no, this is a brilliant system, uh, new to me, and I'm so glad we did it. So we put the four in and we looked at the space and we thought, God, we could easily fit another four in there. So we ended up with eight solar panels. They're made by Longi. They're about, I think they're 400, something like 400 watts each. So in theory, eight, we should get about 3.2 kilowatts. It's actually more than that. We've measured on a really sunny day, four kilowatts coming out of that array. So um, so yeah, either it's coming on over spec or the, the, um, the actual spec of the panels is a little bit more than we thought. So we've got eight panels up to uh, reasonably uh, normal day, so up to about three and a half kilowatts coming off them, sometimes a little bit more when it's really sunny. Um, and they feed directly um, via the uh, inverter into this battery, this 9.5 kilowatt hour battery, which means there's no loss. You don't have to convert from DC to AC and then AC back to DC to go in the battery. That's what the hybrid inverter does. If you get a regular inverter, you're going to be converting your DC from the solar panels up to AC and then AC to DC into the battery. And then when it comes out the battery, it's going to go back from DC to AC again. And every time you convert it, there's a little bit of loss. Okay, not a lot but a little bit of loss yeah so you want to sort of minimize the number of inverters that you put that through so now we've got the give energy hybrid inverter and we've got the nine and a half kilowatt hour battery okay so as i said earlier a total of 23 kilowatt hours there's actually a bit more in that in actual fact because i think it's got about 16 kilowatt hours but they uh they rate it such that you can fill it up to 100 percent and discharge it to zero and actually internally it's not actually going fully to 100 yep so um there's a little bit of spare capacity in there um well what can i say doesn't the installation look nice tidy neat the guys I, I give them another plug nsn electrical in penzance um, um and they uh, they did a fantastic job um seth came in and steve and matt and they um they were friendly they were courteous they were tidy they were hard working um i can't really fault them 
Um, just trying to think if there's anything that annoyed me. Nothing. <laughs> so really good. Really, I must say, thank you very, very much. NSN Electrical did a fantastic job. Really happy with installation. It couldn't have gone better. Um, we've got everything commissioned now. The only thing that I need to talk about now is the Give Energy battery management system which there isn't one. <laughs> I say there isn't one. There is one, but it's not properly available yet. These don't really talk to each other properly. We've got like two logins on the app. So we can either log in and see what this system's doing, or we can log in and see what this system's doing. And they sort of behave independently. So what we're doing is we're using Home Assistant to sort of, we've written some code and we're getting Home Assistant to manage it because the worst thing that can happen is cross-charging of one battery one battery starts discharging the other battery starts charging and you get you get cross charging of the batteries that's what you need to avoid we do know that give energy are working on a battery management system which will look after all this and they have got a beta program we are really hoping please give energy if you're watching can we be on your beta program um it's because we want to try this out yeah and um and get that working but in the meantime we knew that that was going to be the case that it wasn't going to be all um, talking to each other straight away and, um, and managing the system how we would like it. We're quite happy to set that up in Home Assistant and uh, monitor things ourselves and with a little bit of manual overriding every now and again. But ultimately the long-term plan, once we've got uh, the whole system um, installed within it, with a battery management system, as I said, and more panels, we've got one string, we're looking to uh, bring in a second string of solar panels, maybe on the garage roof here, um, maybe next year, and increase our um, solar input. So all that's left to say is, what is our long-term plans for the system? And um, what are we going to do with our export tariff when we get it? At the moment, we don't have an export tariff, yeah? So we can't export to the grid. We're desperately, when we've got excess solar, we're desperately running the washing machine and the tumble dryer, making sure that we're not wasting anything. But when we get our export tariff, that will be, I think I'm right in saying, we'll be getting 15p a kilowatt hour export and we'll be getting 7p a kilowatt hour what we're paying to import during the night. So potentially we can be making a profit. So what we're planning to do when that is the case is to every single night charge up both batteries to full capacity. At the moment, we're leaving one a little bit empty so that excess solar can top it up. Yeah, and we're not wasting anything. But long term, we're going to try and fill both batteries up overnight. We're going to then, obviously, when there's solar, there might be excess electricity. So we can export that, get that 15p a kilowatt hour export tariff. And then towards the end of the day, if we've got lots of spare capacity in the battery, we'll force a discharge into the grid and get paid for that energy. OK, this we think is going to be the most cost effective way of using the system. And once we get that export tariff, we'll be able to try that out. Um, if you've got any ideas or suggestions, um, please put a comment below. Yeah, we'd be really interested to hear your thoughts. And also, if you've got any questions about what we're doing, please do um, put a comment below and we'll try and answer it. I think that covers everything for now. Um, it's been a really exciting week getting all this installed and um, commissioned and uh, we're really looking to forward to really trying it out and um, see how it all works out for us. But we're already saving money. I think our, our mm, given that we're using electricity for the car, for the heating, for everything, our monthly um, bill for June just gone was £115. Prior to all this, we were looking at £300 a month. So we're already saving a considerable amount of money and that will only improve once we get our export tariff sorted out. So this is it. Um, I won't uh, say any more. Please subscribe, by the way, to my channel. And um, please um, do uh, do uh, like the video and uh, feel free to like tell your friends, anyone you know who's interested in this type of thing, to uh, have a look at the channel and subscribe. That really helps me out. The more subscribers, the better. So, uh, so do that. We'll be doing another video update soon, okay, once we've got that export tariff sorted out and we can start using the system as, um, as we want to, then uh, I'll do another video and give you a little update. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful and do keep coming back and checking out my videos on this whole amazing project in Bohemia here in West Cornwall. So I'll say take care and goodbye.